Hi everyone, it's Miss Riley, and you're about to watch a quick video on irregular preterite indicative, I to Y verbs, and stem changing in the preterite. So, first of all, an irregular verb is a verb that is not going to follow the regular verb rules. All that means is that for these verbs, I cannot just take off the ending and add an appropriate um, a aste o. They these verbs are going to completely change in their spelling. Here are a couple of quick rules that you need to remember about irregular verbs. First of all, there are no accents. And most of these verbs are going to have the same endings. Here are those same endings that I'm talking about. A iste o, notice the, the lack of accents. Imos, isteis, and ieron. It's the same pattern that you all are used to from regular preterite. But you'll notice that in the yo form, I've kind of taken the the AR ending and then I go to an ER IR ending and then back to an AR again. Um, just make sure that you memorize these endings and that you remember that there are no accents. Here are a list of some of the irregular verbs that you all learned in Spanish too. Keep in mind that there are other verbs but these are the ones that you all are responsible for. So I've got tener Notice that tener is going to just completely change to tuv. Estar changes to estuv, hacer to is, poner to pus, poder to pud, querer to quis, decir to dig, and ser and ir are the same exact verb and they're going to change to fu. I have a little asterisk here because these verbs, ser and ir, are going to have slightly different endings. Let's do some practice. So you'll notice that up in the top right hand corner I have my irregular verb endings. Really all that you have to do is when you have a verb that you know is irregular you're going to to put it first in the spelling change. So that's like the tu, vestuv, pud spelling change that you saw in the previous slide and then you're going to add the appropriate ending. So if I want to conjugate yo and I have or I want to conjugate tener in the yo form Tener changes to tuv, and then I add my appropriate ending, which is the a. So that's where I got tuve. Mis amigos ponerse. Poner changes to pus, and then I add my appropriate ending, pusieron. Remember the reflexive pronoun. Alicia y Tomás. Decir changes to dig, and then I add my appropriate ending. I have another little asterisk here because remember that the verb decir is going to change to just eron instead of ieron in the ellos and ellas form. Hacer changes to is, and then I add my appropriate ending. Ser and ir, here are the conjugations for ser and ir. You'll notice in the yo form it is not the e. And then down here, it, the verb is fue. There is no o here. So in the yo form and in the el, ella, nu, and ustedes forms, the, or in, excuse me, just in the el and ella form, that's where you see the differences. Hacer, notice that in third person singular, my C changes to a Z. And that's because I want to maintain the S sound of the infinitive, hacer. And if I kept the C there, a C and then an O makes a K sound. So I change my C to a Z to keep that S. Decir, here are the conjugations of decir. Again, you'll notice the ellos and ellas form. It's the heron, not the hieron. Okay, let's talk about I to Y verbs. First of all, an I to Y verb are going to be ER and IR verbs that end in a double vowel. What does a double vowel mean? Here are some examples. Leer. So I've got my ending, my ER, and then right before I have an E. So here are my double vowels. Construir, here's my IR, I've got a U, double vowel. Okay, so you can see that pattern with all of the other verbs. These verbs are going to conjugate regularly in the preterite, except in third person singular and plural. That's the L, ella, and ellos and ellas forms. Let's look at what these look like. So, leí, leí state, you'll notice completely regular, completely regular. Here, I've changed my I, basically, to a Y. That's where I come up with the I to Y um, term. 
The reason why I'm changing my I to a Y is because if I had L-E-I-O, then I have three vowels right next to each other. And in general, I want to try to stay away from having three vowels. Leímos, leísteis, and leyeron. And you'll notice that construction with all of the other verbs only in the el ella and ellos en ustedes forms. Now let's go on to stem changing. Couple of rules for stem changing verbs are that only IR verbs that are stem changing in present tense will stem change in the preterite. Here are some examples. Morir, dormir, servir. Notice that every single one of these verbs is an IR verb and every one of these in present tense will stem change. Stem changing in preterite only occurs in third person singular and plural. That's very different from in present tense. And I'm going to have changes that go from E to I. So like this verb, servir, the E is going to change to an I, pedir, E to an I, or an O will change to a U. So that's going to be these two verbs. Here are some conjugations. Dormir, you'll notice regular, regular, only in my third person singular and plural do I have the O changing to a U. So this is very different from present tense stem changing where you would have the boot verb formation. And you'll notice that this is not a boot, this is not a boot or a shoe formation at all. Preferir, and if you remember, preferir in present tense goes E to IE, but that doesn't matter. It's still an IR verb and it still is a stem changing verb. So in el ella en usted and in the ellos forms, my E changes to an I. Prefirio. That looks kind of weird. And then here's the conjugation for pedir. And there you have it.